friends, welcome back to my channel. Apparently, it's book prize season because we have the booktube prize about to be announced. We have the booker prize about to be announced. And today, we got the announcement of the brand new Nobel Nobel Prize winner for literature, the new, the newest Nobel laureate for literature, Annie Erno. She just won the Nobel Prize and I'm excited because I finally read something from her in August for Women in Translation Month. I read her book, Happening, and for most of the book, because, you know, I don't read synopses of books. I try not to know too much about a book before I read it. I wasn't sure if I was reading novel or memoir for most of the time I was reading this book. Turns out it is a study of her life. And apparently this is what Annie Ernaux is, is known for. She writes autofiction when she writes fiction and in other places she offers up she offers up her own life and experience as a kind of kind of study she gives you a voyeuristic look into her life her thought process her the happenings that some people may want to hide um, she lets you know what it is what's going on so apparently this is her this is her writing this is her writing style reading from the new york times announcement of the nobel prize win it says for decades the french writer annie erno has dissected the most humiliating private and scandalous moments from her past with almost clinical precision quote i shall carry out an ethnological study of myself she wrote this in her 1997 memoir shame it goes on to say erno's writing has spoken particularly to women and to others who like her come from a working class seldom depicted with such clarity in literature she has described her upbringing in a small town in normandy an illegal abortion she had in the 1960s her dissatisfaction with domestic life and a passionate extramarital affair I'll leave the link so you can read the article if you so choose. But I thought her book, Happening, was very introspective, very enlightening. As a woman living in 2022, as a person living in 2022, you've heard, you you know, there's a very big political divide in the United States of America, but also I think around the world, just because politics is politics, is politics regardless of where you live. There's a lot of discussion and debate about whether or not women should have the right to have abortions, whether or not abortions should be legal. And, you know, say what you will about whether or not abortions should be publicly funded. But someone's right to choose what they want to do with their body should not be politics. Like it shouldn't be other people choosing what you what you do. OK, maybe you have to pay for it yourself, but the right to make that choice should be unilaterally for the person whose body it is. But, you know, a lot of people don't see it that way. Um, in a lot of our discussions, choices and rights have to do with finances. It's about who pays for it. The question becomes less about human rights and more about social welfare. And of course, where the buck comes from to pay for it all. So I thought this book was really, really exploratory. Annie Erno revisited a point in her life where she had been trying to get an abortion. She was pregnant. She didn't want to be pregnant. She was not in a relationship that would support the the birth and development of a child. And she was also living in a time where society was not very kind to unwed mothers. And, you know, she knew she wanted an abortion, but she couldn't tell anyone that she wanted an abortion. And the book explores that transition, how people who probably didn't agree with her decision still supported her, still did what they could to try to help her. And I thought that that was just so characteristic of what people need at a time when they are making probably the biggest decisions of their lives. They don't necessarily need judgment. They don't necessarily need your criticism or even need to know your opinion. Sometimes they just need help. And so I thought this book was really significant, even though it had been written by someone from another country and written about a time that was so far in the past, but has come again full circle that we are experiencing a lot of that sameness. So yeah, I don't know, you know, the Nobel, the Nobel Prize Committee is a little tight-lipped on whether or not they awarded this prize to Annie Erno because of her writing on abortion. When it's such a big political discussion right now, they, they haven't said. But yeah, I mean, if that's the reason they gave it to her, 
then uh, kudos to them for making that choice and giving us an opportunity to discuss abortion and uh, discuss the rights of women to choose what they want to do with their bodies all over again, but in a literary way. So yeah, Annie Erno won the Nobel Prize today and I'm here for it. I haven't read anything else by this author, but now I will. Um, happy to say I've read a Nobel Prize winner before she won the prize. So yeah, have you read anything by this author? And so in lieu of our regular book list Thursday video, let me know if you've read anything by Annie Erno and if you have suggestions of what I should read next after I read Happening. Drop that in the comments down below. Let me and let our other viewers know what we should be reading by this author. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. We'll be back soon with another one and I hope you'll join us for it. Until then, happy reading. Bye.